Hi guys, Kieran McAvoy here from A Clever Chimp, and on this channel we talk, learn, and discuss about maths, physics, and all things engineering. This video is part of our guide to engineering maths, and today we're going to be continuing on our discussion about the 3x3 determinant and talking about the expansion by minors method, the most common method you'll be taught in terms of working out a determinant. All of that is coming right up. So last time when we were talking about determinants, specifically the 3x3 three three determinant, we were talking about permutations and transpositions that are a pattern within the determinant. We weren't defining the determinant like that. We had already defined it in a previous video being that it was determining whether or not a set of linear equations had any solutions or not. And what we were doing with the permutations and the transpositions was just noticing a pattern within it that is a recurring pattern with all determinants. And with the expansion of, of Miner's method, that's an important thing to remember in your head, is that that isn't what a determinant is. It doesn't define the determinant. You know, the, the expansion by Miner's method was worked out after we had seen all of these terms in a determinant already there in front of us and then the expansion by minus method is just a pattern within that so let's have a look and see whether we can find that pattern so here we have our typical three by three determinant with the letters defining the rows and the subscript of each letter defines the column that it's in right and next to it i have the determinant i have the determinant there of this matrix to allow us to have a look and see what patterns we can deduce. What we're going to do is we're going to pick an element. Let's pick A1 and see how many terms A1 is in in the determinant. It's in A1, B2, C3 and it's also in minus A1, C2, B3. Let's now pick B1. Notice that B1 is in two terms as well. And the same goes for C1. C1 is also in two of the terms in the determinant. So let's factor out those letters. Let's factor out those letters and see what we're left with. For the A1 terms, we're left with B2, C3, minus B3, C2, all multiplied by A1. And what does that look like? What does that look like to us right now? Well, that, that pattern of B2, C3, minus B3, C2 looks very similar to a 2 by 2 determinant. So let's have a look and see what they relate to in the matrix. It's clear to see that if we were to block out the row and the column that A1 is in, we're left with the elements B2, B3, C2, C3. And the determinant of those elements, the determinant of the square matrix that those elements make up, is B2, C3 minus B3, C2. So that's a great start. Now let's have a little think about whether that's the same for all the cases. Let's have a little let's have a little play and see whether that's the same for all the cases. So let's try factoring out B1 out of its terms. We're left with A3C2 minus A2C3 all multiplied by B1. And that's pretty much the determinant of what's left over after blocking off the column and the row that B1 is in, but it's not quite. It's actually the negative of the determinant of those leftover elements. And so if we wanted to carry on our pattern of working out the determinant of the leftover elements, then all we need to do here is apply a negative to this term. So it's minus B1 multiplying A2C3 minus A3C2, and that will match what we have in the 3x3 three three determinant. And so what about C1? Does this happen with C1? Well, let's find out. Let's factorize C1 out. With C1, we're left with A2B3 minus A3B2, all multiplied by C1. And as you can see, by following the same pattern that seems to be popping up, if we block out the column and the row that C1 is in, we're left with the four elements, A2, A3, B2, B3, and working out the determinant of those elements, then 
we are we, we we already have it we've got a2 b3 minus a3 b2 so all's well we don't need to add any negative there and here you can see that by following down that column a1 b1 c1 and doing that method that we've just noticed there by working out the determinant of the minor matrix or the matrix left over after blocking out the column and the row that that element is in and multiplying that determinant by the element itself you can add up these scenarios and find out the determinants of the 3x3 matrix of course remembering the pattern of the b1 is going to have to be a negative so let's have a little think about whether we can do this for anything else because there are other elements shared amongst the terms within the 3 by 3 determinant. Let's try picking the top row. Let's try picking A1, A2 and A3. If we pick A1, A2 and A3 and follow the same scenario, if we just assume that this is going to happen, let's just try it out. If we have, if we block off the row and column of A1 and work out the determinant of the leftover elements, we have A1 multiplying b2c3 minus b3c2 which matches up with the 3 by 3 determinant. Now let's move on to a2. If we have a2 and we factor that out of the terms that a2 is within then we're left with b3c1 minus b1c3 and like we've said with the case of b1 that's not the determinant that's the negative of the determinant. So what we need to do is multiply in by minus 1 to make sure it matches up with the 3 by 3 determinant. And so we're left with minus a2 multiplying b1c3 minus b3c1, which matches up with our method of working out the determinant and multiplying it by the element that we've blocked the row and column off of. And so let's try a3. With a3, we're left with the minor matrix b1, b2, c1, c2. And by working out the determinant of that, that matches up with the terms that it's in in the 3 by 3 determinant. So we're left with a3 multiplying b1c2 minus b2c1 and here's something that you're not usually told you can do this with any row of the matrix or any column of the matrix you follow along any row you're still going to get the determinant in the long run so long as you match up the pluses and minuses of the original 3 by 3 determinant so long as you can notice what the pattern is there. And the pattern is this checkerboard fashion. So thanks very much, guys. I hope this video has given you some understanding as to what the minus method is. And knowing that it's not defining the determinant, it's just another pattern that's within the determinant. If you like the video, then I would really appreciate it if you left it a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of me talking about maths. Uh, and engineering and all that kind of stuff. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.